Hello piano students, this is Dr. Mario O'Hara, professor of piano at Stephen F. Austin State University. And in this piano lesson video, I want to show you how to play the primary chord progressions in the keys of C major, F major, and G major. The primary chords are the most commonly used chords in Western cultured music, both in classical music, in popular music, and other contemporary music forms uh, as well. I use this in my um, group piano classes for non-music majors. And a lot of this material comes from Alfred's um, Piano 101 uh, textbook. And if you wanted to follow along, you can do so. I'm going to be teaching the chord progression on page 83 from um, Alfred's Piano 101, but you don't have to have your book to go over this. If you're in the key of C major, the most commonly used chord in C major is C major. Right? And that, of course, is spelled C, E, and G, as I'm demonstrating here in the right hand. Another commonly used chord in the key of C major is the one built on the fourth scale degree, or what we call the subdominant, and that one is F major. But rather than having to jump up uh, a perfect fourth from C major to F major, we try to use common chord tone voicings in order to uh, make it easier to get from one chord to the next whenever we're playing through a particular song or piece here. So what note do they share in common? They both share a C. So rather than playing this F major chord in this root position, we're going to play it in an inversion. Instead of playing it F, A, C, I'm going to take that C and I'm going to drop it down here, and I'm going to play this C, F, A combination, which is still an F major chord, but in what we call the second inversion. You'll see here in on the screen that we refer to it as the F major chord still, but with this slash C. Sometimes you'll see F mage slash C, and other times you'll see F slash C. Regardless of what you see there, it means to play an F major chord where C is your bottom note here, okay? So in order to get to the C major to the F major chord, the only thing that you have to remember if you're doing it here in the right hand is to play C major like so. And then take the third and fifth fingers and just bump those up according to the scale. The top note will move up by a whole step while the middle note moves up by a half step. And that's how you get to that there. And I would practice those chords going back and forth just about a million times until you can do it without even thinking about it. Okay. And then once you get back to the C major chord, the other chord, I won't go into any big details on why we call it this, but it's called the G7 chord. All right? The G7 chord is based off of this G major triad, root third, fifth, and then when we add a seventh above that, the F natural, then we end up with this G dominant seventh chord is what we call it here. Okay. However, it's sometimes tough to play all four notes at the same time. So oftentimes we leave out one of the notes in order to make it easier to play. And the note that we leave out here to make it a little bit easier to play is D, all right? the fifth of the chord here. Because you really can't tell much of a difference when you're listening to playing these three notes played together and these four notes played together. So we just make it easier and play this G, D, F combination. And that's the G7 chord. It has a little bit of a dissonant sound, but it makes the return back to the C major chord Oh, that's so much sweeter when we get to it, okay? But rather than jumping back and forth from here to here, I'm going to try to use common chord tone voicings whenever possible. So in order to do that, I keep the top note the same. They both share a G in it, and all I have to do to get to the G7 chord is move the thumb down, or the bottom note down by a half step, to B, and then my top note up a half step to F, and then I've got myself my G7 chord. Another way that you might see it indicated in chord symbols is G7 slash B, like so here, okay? And the fingering that I like to use for that one in the right hand is 1, 4, 5, like this, okay? And then when I come back to the C major chord, all I have to do is move my thumb back just like so here, okay? So to summarize our whole chord progression, the chord progression in the right hand should go like this. C, 2, 3, 4. at a whole bunch of times so that you can change interchange between those three different chords uh, without even thinking about it here.
Okay. You also want to practice it in the left hand because there are some scenarios where you want to be able to do it in the left hand as well. In the left hand, you play C major with 5, 3, and 1. But then when you go to the F major chord, rather than moving both your third and thumb over up to the F and the A like you did in the right hand, or actually use your third and fifth fingers there, what's actually easier to do is easier to move the thumb away and your second finger is already over that F. And this fits the hand much better here. So to use this 5-2-1 fingering is probably the best fingering to use for all second inversion triads in your left hand. 5-2-1 for the F major chord in the progression, and then go back to the C major chord, and then go to the G7 chord, and in order to do this, all you have to do is move your fifth finger, your pinky, down by a half step, and your second finger is already over F, and repeat the G again with your thumb, and you get that G7 chord. Should have a little bit, again, a bit of a dissonance sound, especially here in the left hand, and then when you come back to the C major, then you've got that uh, all set here, okay? So try the left hand with me. C major with 5, 3, 1, ready, go. C, 2, 3, F major with 5, 2, and 1, 2, 3, back to C major with 5, 3, and 1, 2, 3, then G7 with the 5, 2, and 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the C, 2, 3, 4, okay. And I would practice them hands separately at first. You don't have to do this here, but if you'd like to play them hands together, it would look just like this here. Ready, go. C, two, three, four. F, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. G7, two, three, four. C, two, three, four. Okay. So uh, that's how the chord progression, the primary chord progression, looks like in C major. You know, the Beatles, have you guys heard of the Beatles? All right, I'm, I'm not too old here, <laughs> not showing my age. They made a boatload of money off of writing songs that just use these three chords, like, hey, C major, don't make it G7. some really catchy tune with some catchy lyrics to it there and play it play it along with the C major F and G7 chords and make whole lots of money and don't forget the piano teacher who showed you how to do that here okay so that's it in C major you also want to be able to do it in other keys as well if you all have the Alfred's piano 101 book the same progression is written out in G major in, on page 91 if you wanted to follow along with that here okay remember that G major scale has one sharp in it the F sharp in it here I have it on the key signature but I'm gonna hide that for the time being here but your new one chord in G major is G major and just like we had a, um, a four chord in C major we also have a four chord in uh, G major and here it's a C major slash G. So you see how I got to the C major in the second chord of the progression? All I did was move my third and fifth fingers up according to the scale, which is up a whole step in the top note and a half step in the middle note, and then the bottom note stayed the same here, okay? See how it's noted, notated C slash G? That's how you would notate it here. And then you come back to the G major chord, and just like you had a G7 chord, now we have what's called a D7 chord. Remember how we got to the G7 chord in the previous progression? The top note stays the same, but then the bottom note moves down by a half step. And down by a half step is not F, but it has to be F sharp. And the middle note has to go up by a half step. So I end up with this F sharp C D combination, which is called the D7 chord. All right, I won't go into any long explanations on why it's called that way, but just take my word for it, that's the D7 chord. Try not to twist your hand to get to it, but slide your hand forward, and you might have to play your fourth and fifth fingers a little bit higher on the keyboard, like you see me doing over here as well, okay? And then of course you're back to the G major chord. Try to follow the fingering as is suggested in the book, which is one, three, five for the G major chord. Two, three, four. One, three, five for the C major chord. Four. One, three, five. 
still for the G major chord, and then one four five for the D seven chord, and then one three five for the G major chord. Let's try it in the left hand as well. Here, here's the left hand for G major. One, two, here I go. G two three four, but five two one here, then back to five three one for the G major chord, and then five two one for this one, and then back to five three one. And you can practice that one hand separately. You don't have to do it hands together, but if you'd like to practice it hands together, that's what it looks like in G major. Okay? And then finally, I wanted to show you F major, uh, and this is on page 122 to 123 from the Alfred's Piano 101 book as well. Remember that the uh, key of F major has one flat in it, and that's B flat. So just remember that there's a B flat in the key signature. So my new one chord or primary chord in F major, let's do the right hand first, is F major. Okay. However, if I want to go to the four chord or the next chord in the progression, then I want to take the top two notes and move them up according to the scale. However, if I do this, you know how that's wrong here? Or it sounds wrong. It should have a nice sound to it here. I'm forgetting that I have to move the middle note up by a half step and that there's a B flat in the key signature. So make sure you move the third finger up to B flat. Ah, now I got my B flat major, my four chord in the progression. And then go back to the F major chord with the one, three, five fingering. Now for the uh, second to last chord or the dominant seventh chord as we call it, that's a C seven chord. So remember how we get to that top note stays the same, bottom note moves down by a half step and then the middle note moves up by a half step. My fourth finger should already be over the B flat and that's what it should look like. Here's the C7 slash E chord, and it has that dissonance because it makes the return back to the F major sound nice like that there and satisfying. Okay, so one more time, right hand, F, two, three, four, B flat, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, C7, two, three, four, F, two, three, four, okay? In the left hand, the F major chord looks like so. B flat major with the 5 2 1 fingering. Okay, see how my second finger? Some of you may be tempted to want to use your third finger on that there, but 5 2 1 really fits most people's hands much better. Go back to the 5 3 1 with the F major chord, and then the C7 chord still use the 5 2 1 fingering like you did in other seventh chords in this inversion, and then come back to the F major chord. So practice the right hand, practice the left hand, and if you want to, you don't have to, go ahead and practice it hands together. like this. Okay. That way you'll be proficient on it there. And then in future lessons, I'll show you how to use these chords in particular songs and how you can harmonize them and oftentimes play along with other musicians as well. Right? If you have any questions on this lesson, let me know. Uh, you can email me at aherrowmp at sfasu.edu and keep on practicing. Thanks. Bye.